Hello, I am Gwendalina and I am from Vinova. Look at the family in this picture. Every room is now connected to the internet and every member of the family is playing with some sort of video application. Do you find it familiar? I, I certainly do. I mean, I wake up in the morning with a new speed. I may do a little bit of exercise with my virtual coach and then get to work spending long, long hours on Zoom or whatever you guys are using, maybe four or five hours per day. And then the kids are back to school. They relax a little bit on some kind of streaming service like YouTube or Netflix or whatever. And then finally in the evening, we relax with a nice movie. So video is really pervasive in our life today. And it's not only the quantity of video that we are all watching. The point is the quality of experience that it really matters because we all got used to Netflix now where we have full HD quality and even ultra HD quality is becoming normal. And it's not only the resolution, but also the reliability of video. So we all get very pissed when the video buffers. However, in order to get a good quality of experience, you need a lot of bandwidth and a lot of processing power available. In addition to streaming, also the media are becoming more and more intelligent and artificial intelligence applications are putting even more pressure on data centers. Is this sustainable? Hmm, it's a good question. You may think that the network capacity is keeping up with the video pace, but actually it is not the case. Video demand is outpacing video supply and this is not sustainable in the long term. What if we can find a way to address the growing video demand but at the same time reducing the energy footprint? Wouldn't we be in a much better place? Now you see why we're here today. This is the first video of a series and today we're going to talk about why video compression standards matter. Yeah, I know what you think. It's a very boring topic and it's for geeks. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but think about this. You may want to take a nice video on your mobile phone and share it with all your friends around the world and even your grandma. They may have like a six years old uh, uh, mobile devices. And you may also want to watch a nice video on multiple devices. Maybe you start watching it on a mobile phone and then you keep watching on your TV or on a web browser or your laptop. How do you make sure that this video is compatible with all the devices that exist? And that basically that your video is interoperable with any other devices in the world. This is exactly why compression standards matter. So compression standards are fundamental to guarantee interoperability and uh, hardware compatibility. However, standards take a lot of time, typically about seven years from a certain standard to the next one, because initially it takes two to three years for the standard on the hardware to be ratified. And then of course, this hardware, this chipset in a certain device takes five years and even seven, 10 years to get to the global adoption of the devices, which includes this new hardware. So standard is a, is a very long-term thing. If you think about the standard situation today, H.264 AVC is going to be 18 years old next year. However, the majority of the streaming services that are out now are still based on this technology. And HEVC, which has been standardized seven years ago, is still restricted to a limited part of the streaming services today. Look at the blue curves in this graph. When you progress with the compression standards, typically compression rates becomes better and better. However, there is a cost. There is a very big processing power cost to achieve greater compression. In the case of VVC, which is the latest standard that has been ratified very recently by MPEG, we're talking about a 10 time increase in the processing requirements. Additionally, if you want to use a new compression standard such as VVC, you need to have new devices, new chipset. It is not backward compatible, which means that 
if operators want to take advantage of the new compression standard, they need to duplicate their beta workflow. So adopting a new standard is not easy at all, and it's expensive. In fact, rolling out a new standard is almost prohibitive. And so, how does LCEVC comes into play? LCEVC stands for Low Complexity Enhancement Video Coding. LCVC redefined the trade-off between compression and processing. It enhances the compression of an existing codec to that of the next generation codec. And at the same time, it reduces the encoding and the coding complexity. That means that it doesn't need to wait long hardware cycles in order to get deployed, but it can be deployed today as a software update on all existing devices. If you want to check out some more information, including a lot of scientific studies about the performance of LCVC done by third parties, check out lcevc.org. And then keep watching this space because more video will come. Thank you very much for watching. Ciao.